Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero. This is a supplemental video to my main playthrough where I'm going to talk about the plot and um, ending of Inside, so major spoilers beware. But I've just been in the game. I've um, gotten both the endings and uh, I think I have a general gist of what's going on in the storyline and the symbolism behind it. And the, the first point I think I'll go over is essentially, if you can't already tell, brainworm things are essentially behind a lot of the storyline. They've changed the world quite a bit. Uh, you go across that farm with the pigs, they seem to be all over the damn place. I think that pig is actually a research place, not necessarily a sign that everything's infected. Although I suspect a great deal of the world is possibly infected, but... Either way, mankind's turned a possible curse into a blessing. They now have efficient labor. They're genetically creating these humanoids with the worms. And they're seemingly breeding them in, like, water. And you can kind of see this in some of the scenes, like you see the worms are below the water in these forms. And each form is being bred a little bit differently for either physical labor or um, what I imagine might be household work or something. The more human looking ones and stuff like that. Um, I debate if they're breeding kid versions. Like the main character is a kid, but he could just be possessed by a worm, not necessarily one of them because he doesn't exhibit the same traits. But basically you have two schools of thought on that. If you assume there is kid versions that kind of be adopted kids, the one kid you see when the truck scene happens is one of them. And if it's the other school of thought, then of course you're just a normal kid who somehow has been under control of the brain worm. And over time you become more like the others, more durable, and they're able to bring them to wander all that other stuff. But anyway, I think the more important thing to actually discuss, because everything is more straightforward, is the meaning of the plot, and this will actually kind of tie into a big secret in the storyline. So, essentially I feel like the storyline is about the nature of um, control, but I, I don't think it's supposed to necessarily have a true, deep commentary about society or anything. It's a little too science fiction-y, Cronenbergish monster for that. I think it's partially just there to kind of add like a cool twist, like make you think a little bit, but... You uh, see in the farm, in the secret ending, that there is one of those control devices there. And that control device has to be coming out of it. I'm not sure if it's the worms and it's the queen worm, the, the kind of bulbous blob at the end that's controlling this, or if it's just wires, just wires running out to each one of those little orbs. Now I'm leaning towards it actually being wires because you see these orbs all over the place and I, I'm assuming that these orbs may actually be kind of range extenders, in a sense. Like, they're extending the range, the range of control, and they're seemingly dotted along conveniently on your path that eventually leads you to the big queen orb worm thing. Doesn't quite explain why your control doesn't just stop outright and you just die right there when you pull the plug on them, but I think that just could be just gameplay or something. But anyway, you have an illusion of control. In a sense, the player themselves is the one manipulating the game as the puppet strings and whatnot. You're led to believe initially that the boy is trying to escape, maybe, but it's kind of weird because the boy looks like he's going deeper and deeper into the belly of the beast. And of course, the big reveal comes into the end, whereas the boy has become more inhuman, being able to breathe in the water and everything, being able to control the beast without any control. Um, it merges with the queen, kind of Cronenberg uh, monster orb at the end, and then the Cronenberg monster tries to escape. Now, there's some theories that it's the humans kind of manipulating all this. And even the escape of the Cronenberg monster was intended, and they point to the kind of movie set kind of in the glass case that looks exactly like the ending of the game. Uh, I actually don't think the humans wanted this, because it seems way too expensive. There is a movie set theme throughout, kind of to like foreshadow what's happening, but inherently I think it's more of a uh, symbolic movie set to kind of further show like you don't really have true control. The boy doesn't have control because Inherently, you might be being controlled by the worm orb, the Cronenberg monster. And the Cronenberg monster doesn't have quite full control. It's because it's being manipulated by these humans all along and so on. And none of these characters have control because they're being played by a video game character, by a video game player. So when you crash into that little set, I think that's just kind of a nod to the ending to foreshadow it. I don't think it's quite showing that they had this completely planned where you'd specifically roll for these specific areas all the way to the end. Uh, I think they were trying to guide you towards a trap so they can encase you. But I think that set was just a show like, hey, this is the outside of our base. Maybe you're going to develop here later in the world. And for you, it's more of a foreshadowing in the sense of this is where you're going to end up in the end. And as you make your escape, 
you almost make it. You almost make it. You roll down that hill, but you don't. You end up just short of the ocean, and the light shines on the orb, the Cronenberg monster, and it cuts to the credits. So it's kind of a... You aren't truly in control of your fate thing. Just kind of a bittersweet... It manages to escape, but it doesn't quite make it. Complete failure. And uh, kind of a bit of a fatalistic message, if anything. I suppose you could argue it's possibly a bit of a symbolism for life, how you can try so hard and feel like you're in control, but you're not really not, and sometimes fate just kind of screws you over, or sometimes you'd be kind of going along a route that, like I said, you don't have much power over whether you're under a boss or just events don't work out your way. I'm sure it's partially that, but I'm also sure it's partially just kind of like a cool, sad twist in the end, where essentially you're supposed to kind of feel bad for it. It's it's kind of a horrible looking thing, but you're supposed to feel inherently a little bit of a sadness because uh, from along, the boy's seemingly escaping, and you find out that he's not really escaping, he's trying to reach a certain place, and then you get to the true escape, and you, well, don't, and in the sense you're kind of stuck inside the system still. With that reference, I actually think the alternate ending, as anticlimactic as it is, is probably supposed to be the good ending because it's a kind of severance of fate, of your futility of your initial journey, which is what it's gonna be. By pulling the cord, the boy is deciding not to be control on anything. It's kind of deciding its own fate. And I actually mentioned this one in my playthrough about going on to your own terms, being a very important thing for um, living things and people. Where even if going on your own terms may necessarily, or might be the worst choice, and maybe the most fatal choice possibly, Obviously, it's very important for some people to have this option as possibly a source of pride or a sense of like I am in control By going throughout the entire game. I am NOT in control. I am of controlled by the orb thing and the orb thing is Trying to escape but is still in control of the people inherently and gets captured again I'm assuming at that beach by severing the wire the boy is taking his own life indirectly and deciding he's not gonna go for this He's finally doing something that is not within the control of someone else Overall, depressing message, though. So, inherently, there's no upside to this game, which is what it boils down to. But there really isn't supposed to be. And I don't think there's necessarily supposed to be a true message you're supposed to take home the heart. It's a bit like certain old films, like Twilight Zone and all those, where it's not designed to necessarily teach you something, although Twilight Zone was pretty good at teaching you things. But this is like one of the episodes that wasn't, where there were some Twilight Zone episodes, or some hour limits or whatever, that weren't about necessarily teaching a meaning, but just having kind of a twist, kind of sad fate story. And I think like that's what this story is trying to be. Like, it looks like the humans are going to win in the end. Oh no, the humans, all they did was just take out some rival alien's brother, and they just fell right into his hands, and now they're back under alien control again. Something like that. Which was a actual uh, Outer Limits episode. But yeah, that pretty much sums up what I feel is the storyline. I suppose if you kind of dig around in there, you might find some more deepest lore things about how the world might have headed up in this state and everything like that. But inherently, I think the game is about the message they didn't want to fully flesh that out. I hope you enjoyed listening to this, and I actually plan to probably do this kind of story explanation in its own video in this format from now on, rather than just shoving it to the end of my other videos. So if you like this, you know, leave a comment, uh, leave some love, maybe some hate, ideally not some hate. Aside from that, until next time guys, I'll see y'all later, and take it easy.